I float between 10 different units, including cancer, neurology, pediatrics, or emergency department boarded patients, lots of different things. And a few years ago, I could walk into any of those units and know almost every person I was working with. I would know my support staff, which by that I mean a licensed nursing assistants, respiratory therapists, and then um, my fellow nursing colleagues. Currently, and this is definitely without exception, I know less than 50% of the people I work with. And this is a huge problem because nursing is a team sport. You cannot take care of four to five acutely sick patients by yourself. And when I walk in on a unit and I don't know the skill and ability of my colleagues, it makes it a much more dangerous pace, place for me and my, my patients. And in addition, um, you know, if the charge nurse is responsible for taking um, you know, a really acute patient from the emergency department who's very sick, that he or she is gonna give that patient to me as a fresh admission over someone she doesn't even know. Um, so the experienced staff members currently on the floor are getting the sickest patients we are walking in not knowing the, our colleagues, which means that you know, it's very hard to ask for support if you don't know the people you're working with. Actually, in case they're usually asking you for help all of the time because a traveler gets three days of orientation on an inpatient unit. I mean, it's impossible for them to know policies, protocols, order sets, physicians' preferences. Um, so you're just, it's really hectic. <laughs> I feel like I'm running around like with my head chopped off all the time and I've been here for a long time. So it didn't used to be like that. It's, definitely a, a change. Okay. Well, thank you for sharing that. I appreciate the, the getting the imp inpatient perspective from both Deb and, and you, Tracy. I'm wondering if we can turn now to the, the technologist side uh, of things and what you're experiencing, Lori, and CATSCAN in terms of just the incredible load that you and your colleagues are, are bearing right now, given given the staffing issues that are, that are present. Yeah, um, CATSCAN alone has lost 10 technologists out of approximately 30 of us since January of 2021. Um, we're struggling to attract or retain even travelers. They so much as hired us an x-ray traveler to do CT this summer, which is much like hiring an electrician when you need a plumber. It, we end up training these people and then they're gone in three months. Um, and also uh, the urgent staffing text pages that we get on a daily, sometimes multiple times a day. Um, and we've even had them reach out with SOS. We're drowning, they, they have that many patients, they're just drowning, we can't keep up. So, and when there are open shifts, um, the hospital has decided to mandate them. So like myself, I was mandated in August they told me on Wednesday that Saturday or Sunday, 3 to 3 p.m. to 11 p.m. was my shift. Didn't matter that it wasn't mine. Didn't matter that I had to return at 6.30 a.m. Monday morning to then work a 10-hour shift. So I get mandated to work an eight-hour shift, have seven hours off to return to do another 10 hours. It just doesn't seem safe for myself or uh, patients. Well, thank you for that perspective. Yeah. So we've heard a little bit about inpatient as well as the, the technologist side. Sarah, you're an, 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 an outpatient nurse, um, which is a different side of things. And I'm just wondering if you might be able to, to talk about what it's looked like in the outpatient world. Absolutely. I, for me, I've been somewhat fortunate in all of this in that I work in a smaller clinic. It's myself and one other nurse, and we're both still with the organization still in that clinic. But I'll be honest, we have discussed, both of us have discussed leaving. Um, we still discuss leaving. And I think one, if not both of us, when all of this is said and done, will will leave. I most likely will leave the profession in the next few years because of how bad things are. Um, you know, it, it's heartbreaking for us. And, and I know my colleagues in other outpatient clinics are suffering far worse. Primary care is one of those examples. They are running so short staffed that they're being asked to take shifts after the clinic is closed just so that they can get to the in baskets so that they can get calls back to patients so that patients can get care in some kind of a timely manner. Um, but like I said, it's, it's heartbreaking. You know, we, we got into this field and, and into these professions because we wanted to help people and we wanted to support our community. And every single day we're watching our ability to do that disappear. And instead we're being asked to scrape the bottom of an empty barrel for scraps to, to give people. And 
it's hard. It's really hard to wake up every day and know that you're going to go into work. You're not going to be able to do your best. You're not going to have the resources that you need to provide the care that you want to provide. And you're going to go home feeling defeated every day. 